My earliest memory of getting in trouble with my mum was over my hair. Whilst I was in nursery in Norway, my mum was styling my hair, and I had a very specific hairstyle in mind, like the one of my French classmate Clementine. I wanted it to be long, but it was curly and thick, and short. No matter how she styled it, I was unhappy. We both grew angry and frustrated. Depending on the style and the size of the braids, an entire head of hair can take a long time, hours, even days to complete. I'm reluctant to describe this process as time-consuming, because I'm keen to disrupt our deeply ingrained, yet recent and culturally specific, myth of time as a commodity. It makes a lot more sense to imagine braiding as a social time during which the business of living is conducted. It is a process that brings people together and facilitates intergenerational bonding and knowledge transmission. Page 48 Cheryl Clarke's poem, Hair and Narrative, shows that the question of the relationship between self-image and hair straightening is always shot through with emotional ambiguity. She describes her experience as implicating both pleasure and pain, shame and pride. The negative aspects of the hot lie and steel comb method are held in counterpoint to the friendship and intimacy between herself and the hairdresser, who against a war of tangles, against the burning metamorphosis, taught me art, gave me good advice, gave me language, made me love something about myself. Another problem with prevailing anti-straightening arguments is that they rarely actually listen to what people think and feel about it. Page 104 Within Racism's Bipolar Codification of Human Worth, black people's hair has been historically devalued as the most visible stigmata of blackness, second only to skin. Page 101 My parents told me I had to wait until I was old enough to get my hair relaxed. Living in Tanzania, I insisted on wanting to do it. I wanted it to be straight because all my other friends got their hair relaxed. Relaxer has a very distinct, strong smell. The hairdresser told me my hair was ready to be rinsed when I started to feel a burning sensation. I loved the moment after the wash when my hair would be silky and straight. We require a historical perspective on how many different strands, economic, political, psychological, have been woven into the rich and complex texture of our nappy hair, such as that issues of styles are so highly charged as sensitive questions about our very identity. As parts of our modes of appearance in the everyday world, the way we shape and style our hair may be seen as both individual expressions of the self and as embodiments of society's norms, conventions and expectations. Page 99 to 100 I am often struck by the points of shared experience between black women when it comes to our hair, despite the fact that we might be continents apart. Page 23 I remember the moment I decided to stop relaxing my hair. I was 15, flicking through the TV channels, and I stopped to watch the documentary Good Hair by Chris Rock. I was completely shocked by all the health risks of relaxing your hair. I then discovered the natural hair movement. I spent hours on YouTube. It became a huge learning tool for me. I learned so much about its care and how much my hair is capable of. Whilst the natural hair movement was quite big back then, I feel like the dialogue on social media has shifted from just embracing your natural hair. Now it's about sharing and enjoying the versatility of all black women's hairstyles, like the DMX challenge, where the challenge was users had to share videos of themselves with a multitude of hairstyles synced to the rapper's roll call. Many women insist that their decision to go natural is not explicitly political. The fact that they even have to state this, however, shows how far from the norm black hair is still considered to be. Page 39. When I started creating art about my hair, I thought this would be more of a reflective process. However, it has definitely had an effect on my personal relationship with my hair now. Through the exploration and research I've done, I feel a deeper personal understanding of the strong feelings around my hair and how much these have developed and impacted me growing up. My braids have definitely become an important part of my identity and I hadn't realised. I feel I've got back to feeling confident always changing my hair, like I did as a child. Braiding my hair has now become a style rather than a practicality and my identity, which I've had a hard time letting go of or changing over the past four years. Within a traditional West African aesthetic, the idea of artifice was often highly valued and we know that hair was rarely, if ever, left out in anything resembling a natural afro. 
The range of styles and textures that can be achieved with Afro hair, from relaxer to weave to intricate braiding patterns, is evidence of the expertise and creativity that black people, particularly black women, have demonstrated through their hair over millennia. Page 92. I realised that by never having my natural hair out for very long, I created a cycle where because I didn't make the time to learn how to style my hair and how to maintain it and keep it healthy, it made me see my hair care as difficult and as time consuming. After reading Don't Touch My Hair by Emma Dabiri, I've learned the value of reclaiming that time as a form of self-care.
does a given interpretation mean for my own understanding of how reality works? That is, what does it allow? What does it prohibit? And most importantly, how does it support, contradict, enhance, restrict my own experience? And then he also gave a more specific response about uh, Rovelli's remarks. Like, how does that kind of factor into our, our own research that we're doing here, um, whether it's scientific or artistic, but uh, I did did mostly read The Order of Time, that uh, was one of the books Jeffries suggested, um, and it, he's very artistic in that book, he references multiple plays, references Proust, Shakespeare, all sorts of Indian philosophers or kind of ancient uh, Socrates, Plato, um, this and that. So he he's making it digestible. Are you serious? Are you serious? Okay, the extreme weather conditions continue. Of course, we had unbelievable hail, hail and hail, great hail falling in the south, southern states of the United States, actually. One person was killed even in a line of severe thunderstorms that hit Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning. In the From the idea of quant, so essentially, quanta break up the continuity of the world, and categories break up the continuity of the world. And in a way, categories are a way of repackaging quantum breakages in the continuum into a form that we've now abstracted out. We're living in the last days that the Bible refers is coming to pass. I'll be back with more current world events and how they relate to biblical prophecy. Give your life to Jesus Christ. You're in the last days.